Rollbar provides deep visibility for QA teams into not only what's going on within the application, but also to help detect errors that testing tools can never detect. Rollbar sits inside your application code at runtime, picking up exceptions, errors, info messages to help you respond and fix those quickly. It gives you that insight into this is the test failure. This test failure might show you that it's a problem with the, the, the GUI or some login or some application problem, but the underlying production exception or code exception is what Rollbar gives you visibility into. Now, allowing you to link that back to a Selenium test or a Cypress test gives you that deep visibility, not only to not have to reproduce the error again for a developer, but they can then quickly just click on Rollbar, get to the line of code and fix it without having to rerun the code. To make an experiment, is something breaking or not, but they'll get that feedback so quickly, it's almost instantly with Rollbar, right? So you know that, uh-oh, something's wrong, we can fix it quickly or turn it off. So that's that where, where Chaos Engineering and Rollbar really aligns because it's that real-time feedback as you're trying to push this stuff into production and experimenting with it. My name is Arno Ferreri. I work as an engineering lead for the consumer team here at Instacart. We deliver groceries from existing retailers in different states in the US. When we're talking about food to put on the table for your friends and your family, uh, it can go wrong. Our services have to be up at all times. For a lot of our services, we use continuous deployment. Because of that, we can't have engineers looking at production every minute, so we need to be proactively alerted when something goes wrong. What our engineers love about Rollbar is the ability to, at a quick glance, see the size of an issue, the number of times it happened within the last minute, within the last hour. I think Rollbar does a great job at integrations with other services. And so we have an integration with Rollbar and GitHub, with Rollbar and Slack, with Rollbar and PagerDuty, and so it plugs into all the sources of information that we need. I think the moment where it became very clear for me was a moment where we had a new roll bar arriving. I clicked on the link, arrived on the UI, saw the stack trace, clicked on it, arrived on GitHub, saw the last commit from this person that was deployed a few minutes ago, and basically went from there's a new problem to here is you know, the root cause to here's a resolution within 30 seconds. It has helped us dramatically uh, improve the way we do our detective work, basically. Understanding when there is an actual issue, where it's coming from, at what volume, how many customers is it affecting, and therefore, what action do we need to take. The engineers here don't see Rollbar as a third-party tool that we use. You know, it's so tightly coupled into the way we work that it seems part of our system as a whole. Hello everyone, this is Conf42 JavaScript 2022, the best place to boost your JS skills. Before we start, please make sure to join our Discord server. Post your questions in the hashtag JavaScript channel. This event is brought to you by Rollbar, the diamond sponsor, silver sponsors, and media partners. The conference opens with a keynote by Finbar Fleming, customer engineer at Rollbar, improving the process of debugging JavaScript errors in production for better end-user experience and happier developers. My agenda for today is as follows. So first of all, I'm just going to set the stage, introduce myself, talk a little bit about what Rollbar is about and what I do for Rollbar. And then I'm going to talk about the, the impact of production JavaScript errors, and then talk a little bit about some of the particular difficulties that JavaScript developers have, maybe that other um, developers of other languages don't have. And then I'm going to talk about real-time error monitoring, which is a part of the solution that Rollbar offers, and how that can help you to dramatically improve uh, your error response process. The Getting Started track is the first one today. Chris Miller and Liz Kaufman from the School of Code will show you how to make clean, concise, and collaborative code. I'm Chris Miller, Head of IT and Development at School of Code. i um, been working with computers since 2000 professionally, been using computers since 1983, back when 8Colors was considered fun. 
Liz, do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hi, I'm Liz Kaufman. Great to be here as well. After graduating with a history and archaeology degree, still didn't know quite what I wanted to be when I grew up. Worked in project management and operations in the private and public sector till nearly 30 when I thought, if not now, when? I, I'm going to follow that little what if in the back of my head toward technology. Heard about a thing called the School of Code Bootcamp, saw that it was free and thought, oh, I'll give this a go. And I discovered at the as a boot camper that code is the closest thing to magic in real life. And then after graduating as an assistant coach, coach and lead coach and head of boot camp at the School of Code, I've helped share that magic with over 300 people and counting. Marcel Andre, front-end developer at WISE, is here to teach JavaScript to the uninterested. In the fall of 2016, I had the interesting challenge of having to teach beginner programming to a class of university students who never actually intended to do any coding in their lives. To find out more about how that went, join me in my session. Cheers! Internationalization and localization is the next lecture by Mayank Kumar, senior software engineer at Rakuten India. We will be covering multilingual software and apps, internationalization and localization. Why do we need these and what is the process to set it up? What are the challenges and complexity we may see when we implement these into our application? We'll also try to touch base upon RDL and the browser support available while building multilingual apps. Intro to SolidJS for React developers is the next great talk by Travis Wade Mayer, Senior Software Engineer at Plex. I'm at Twitter at Travis Waithmer in Camel Case, and I have a blog at nontraditional.dev. I work for Plex, and I also am the creator of the Bedrock Layout Primitive Library, originally written in React, but is also has a port over in SolidJS. Andrew Knight, the automation panda at Applitools, will show you how to visually test your components. Today, I'm going to show you how to run visual tests for your storybook components across different browsers, and you won't even need to write a single line of new test code. Let's learn. Let's discover new JS utilities in the tools track. Our promises are only choice. Nati Roca, software developer at Stack Builders, is here to answer this question. If you use JavaScript or TypeScript, I am sure that you have used promises before. I know that they can be really easy and fun to program with, but are they our only choice? I invite you to this talk. We will be learning how to use functional programming and some alternative asynchronous operations like task, task either, remote data, or futures to show you how we can handle side effects and build more robust applications. See you there. Katarzyna Wojdalska, the co-founder of Ecolint, will now introduce you to digital ecology. Can you mitigate the carbon footprint of websites? Have you ever heard about digital ecology? During my keynote, you can learn what digital ecology really is and get familiar with some simple techniques how to make your online activities more sustainable. However, my main focus are going to be websites. If you would like to create greener, more sustainable websites and you wonder if there are any tools that could help you with it, my talk is a perfect match. Have an inspiring conference. Building Slack applications with Bolt.js is the next amazing talk by Alba Rivas, Principal Developer Advocate at Salesforce. I'm going to be talking about how to build Slack applications with a framework called Bolt. I'm going to show you an app built with Bolt.js, which is the version of Bolt for Node, but Bolt is also available in Java and Python. Hope that you watch my session. Translator Words app on JavaScript is the next exciting tool presented by Anton Kalik, senior software engineer at Amenities. Hi, uh, I'm going to talk about Translator Word app on JavaScript. This is a journey of experienced client server application from scratch till workable solution. You will find out how to set up the inter infrastructure, how to handle session, how to build interface, where to start and what to take into account in the development process for your first startup. You will get some code of communication between server and client using GraphQL and Apollo. You will see the crucial parts of 
building full service code structure, relations, security part of protecting roads, all tools in one for a simple startup just in one session. Meteor.js as a framework for hyper-prompt development is the upcoming lecture by Arman Marjabulatov, Senior Software Engineer at Rabobank. Hello and welcome. Today I'll be talking about Meteor.js, full-stack JavaScript framework can, that can be used for rapid development and prototyping, and I will also show a little demo. Thanks for joining. Dmitry Korev, Senior Software Engineer at Mero, will now explain the functionalities of scalable event-driven applications with Nest.js. I will briefly introduce you to the Nest.js framework. We'll show a hands-on example, a part of an application that slows down when traffic spikes. And finally, I'll explore ways we can solve those problems. Thanks and see you. Treat your users right with segmented rendering is the next exciting session by Eric Burel, computer science engineer at LBKE Vulcan. Hello everybody and welcome to Conf42 JavaScript. In my talk, I'm going to show you how to treat your users right with a new pattern for the Jamstack named Segmented Rendering. Segmented Rendering lets you personalize the content of a website for your users without losing the performances of static rendering. I hope you will enjoy the conference and I hope to see you at this talk. See you later. Luciano Mamino, senior architect at Four Theorem, will now show you how to build a zero-cost invite-only website with Next.js and Airtable. I'm really excited to present this use case where we're going to learn how to build an invite-only single-page application. This is something you can use if you want to create your own website for a wedding, an anniversary, or any other kind of private event, really. I will show you how you can build an invitation page that is customized for every single guest, and that it allows you to collect which guests are attending or not, and potentially any other user information, like whoever has allergies, comments, suggestions, and so on. We will also discuss how we can build all of this very quickly and host it online practically for free by leveraging the free plans of Vercel and Airtable. In the process, we will be learning about Next.js, React, and even something about security. I'm really looking forward to this talk, and I hope you will enjoy this beautiful conference. Lyra, disrupting the full text search industry with JavaScript, is the next tool presented by Michela Riva. Staff Engineer at Nearform. Hello everyone! During the past few months I've been working a lot on a new full text search engine completely written in JavaScript that can be deployed on edge networks. So if you're interested in learning more about how we made it and how full text search works at the edge, please follow my talk, Lira, Disrupting Full Text Search Industry with JavaScript. So yeah, see you during the talk. Robert Abukail, Senior Software Engineer at Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, joins in to talk about interactive command line tutorials with WebAssembly. Hi there, join me for my talk on using WebAssembly to power interactive command line tutorials in the browser. Web Applications of the Future with TypeScript and GraphQL is the next talk by Roy Dux developer experience at Stepsen. So in this talk, I will be explaining how you can use both TypeScript and React together to actually create web applications that are future-proof. You might also learn a thing or two around end-to-end -end type safety, which is, in my opinion, the holy grail of full-stack web development. So sit around and hang tight. Implementing a performant URL parser from scratch is the next session by Yagis Nizipli. Node.js core member and senior software engineer. Uh, I'm Yoz Nizipli. I'm a software engineer. I'm a, a master's student at Fordham University. Um, I'm a Node core collaborator and performance team member. I've been mainly focusing on text encoders and decoders and the performance in Node.js. Um, I'm uh, the creator of URL state machine and fast query string. Algorithmically generated visual designs will be introduced by Michael Weher, visiting assistant professor at Swarthmore College. So in this talk, we're going to explore how you can use JavaScript 
to procedurally generate artwork and visual designs. Um, in total, we implemented nine algorithms following this process, and each algorithm will generate a different type of artwork. So I'm going to tell you a bit about our process, and then I'm going to show you a tutorial so that hopefully you all can try to generate artwork using JavaScript. Please stay tuned. Thank you. Saravana Balajis Renivason, software engineer at Red Hat, will give us a talk about platform freedom with micro frontends. JavaScript, TypeScript, or React application can run on Visual Studio Code, GitHub, or browser as its extension. Can this be possible with minimal code changes? Yes, it is possible with micro frontend strategies in multiple architecture. I am Sarvana Balaji Srinivasan. My talk, Platform Freedom with Micro Frontends, will take you through a list of micro frontend strategies and its framework called a multiplying architecture. Excited to see you at Con42. Join me there. Building machine learning powered applications with JavaScript is the upcoming lecture by Joshua Arvin Latt, CTO of NewWorks Interactive Labs. Today, we will talk about machine learning and we will share with you the different strategies on how to build machine learning powered applications with JavaScript. The time has come for the deep dive track. Li Hao Tan, senior expert engineer at Shopee, will now show you how to build your own Svelte. Hello, hello, I'm Li Hao. I'll be talking about build your own Svelte. Join me in the process of looking at how you can parse Svelte syntax into abstract syntax tree, and then we can analyze it and generate and optimize JavaScript code. Through the process, I will do live coding, and you will see how we can do that within the span of the whole talk. So see you in the conference. Bye. JS Docs. It's like TypeScript, but without all that TypeScript. Please join me in welcoming Austin Jill. Senior Developer Advocate at Akamai Technologies. Hey, how's it going? Today I want to talk to you about JS Docs. It's sort of like TypeScript, but without all of the TypeScript tooling. So if you use TypeScript and you love it, maybe the JS Docs won't be for you. But if you have either heard of TypeScript and have not tried it yet, or you're curious, or you tried it and you didn't like it, we're going to look at JS Docs and maybe it's going to be something that you're interested in. Serhi the author of Catches.com tech blog will now show you how to make your TypeScript safer. Gareth McComsky, developer advocate at Serverless, will now tell you how Serverless is changing the world for developers. Data analytics in browser with Alas QLJS is the next talk by Gaurav Patra and Bagyajit Jagdev from TechWeirdo Consultancy. Hello, tech is around the world. I'll be talking about data analytics on edge with ALASQL. I'll be taking you through fundamentals of ALASQL, solving business use cases and future development. Uh, then my co-speaker Bhagajit will go deep dive into it. I appreciate your presence and hope to see you soon in person. Thank you. Griffin Solot Kull, developer advocate at Dolby.io, is here to invite you to learn Babylon.js to create your own 3D metaverse environments. Hi, Com42. I'm going to be talking about how to build a browser-based metaverse using Babylon.js, which is a web-based game development engine where we're going to be learning about what it is, how to start using it, doing some live coding, and also integrating some live streaming features where we're going to be able to stream live video feeds directly inside of our browser-based game engine. So come check it out if you're interested. Stop being a YAML engineer. Be a software engineer with CD Kubernetes. Presented by Robert Hoffman, Senior Solutions Architect at AWS. Hey everyone, are you feeling sick of being the YAML engineer when working with Kubernetes? I will show you CDKs, a new tool that allows you to use real programming languages to define your Kubernetes manifests. Check out my talk to learn how you can move from being a YAML engineer to being a real efficient software engineer. Roman Boyko, Senior Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS, will now address serverless backend for frontend on AWS. And want to 
Welcome you into my talk on Conf42 JavaScript conference uh, about uh, how to build backend for frontend uh, with AWS serverless applications. So in my talk, I will explain a little bit uh, what it is uh, backend for frontend pattern and what it means uh, uh, serverless to you and uh, show you how you can take this backend for front pattern which is quite common and commonly used uh, for the, uh, with front-end teams and how you can apply different serverless services like API Gateway, Lambda, Event Bridge, DynamoDB to implement quite co complex and capable uh, backend for front-end and what benefits it can bring to you. So, see you on, uh, on my talk. Thanks a lot. Gaining confidence with Cypress tests is the next session by Rob Richardson, developer advocate at Shoreline.io. Hi, welcome to Comp42 JavaScript 2022. Today we're gonna to talk about getting started with Cypress and in particular, gaining confidence in our websites with Cypress tests. In the first talk of the lessons learned track, Ben Twuste, senior software engineer at Forter, will talk about the five developers principles that help him as a new father. Please join me on my quest to have better sleep and peace of mind as a new father. In this talk, we're going to go through five developer principles to help me get better sleep and peace of mind as a new parent. I will share code examples, before and after pictures of my house and my son. And for all you new parents, we are in this together. Thank you. Remix Party, you're invited, is the next session by Dave Bitter, developer advocate, team captain, and senior front-end developer consultant at I.O. In my talk, we're going to have a look at Remix, the full-stack web framework. So we're going to have a look at what Remix is, how it works, and why you should care about using a framework like this. So if you care about working with the web instead of against it, please come join my talk, and we're going to have a look together. James Diacono, software engineer at Ecumaps, is here to tell you more about feedback and Ripple. I like pruning. I like that I can sort of see my progress as I go. There's other aspects of gardening that uh, I find a lot harder. Like growing vegetables, never really been very good at that. And I think it's partly because such a slow feedback loop there. You know, whenever I make a mistake, maybe I'll put too much fertilizer in or I'll plant the veggies in the wrong spot. I won't find out for months. It makes it really hard to improve. My talk this year is about feedback loops, and how they affect programmers. Julio Cesar Abalde Reyes, head of Coronet at Singular, is here to address the changing API problem. I'm very happy to be with you at COM42 JavaScript, talking about the problems that the front-end team had when, I, uh, when using uh, APIs, and the solution and tools that we have uh, thought to make it less painful. I wait you all on November 17th. In the last, but definitely not least, session at the conference, Domenico Musto, principal engineer at Chronomix, will talk about development productivity in a post-serverless world. If you are interested in exploring what's beyond serverless, what's coming next, and how we can build applications faster, please join my talk. We will write some code and look at concrete examples of some of the emerging models I want to share with you, so I won't bother you uh, just with slides. I hope to see you there, and I wish you a great conference. That's all we've got in store today at Conf42 JavaScript 2022. As always, keynotes go right after this video ends, and free registration unlocks all the content immediately. Please make sure to join our Discord server to have a chat with speakers, sponsors, and other attendees. Before you get there, please make sure to read the Code of Conduct. Com42 would never exist without your support. Thank you so much for attending. We would like to thank our speakers, partners, and sponsors for making this whole show possible. 
And uh, that was Mark. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you on Discord in a minute. Cheers. <laughs>